guys, Anne Marie the Forager Chick here. If you're new to our channel, welcome. I'm so happy to see you. Um, today I wanted to talk about some of my favorite herbal books about wild foods and cooking wild foods. A lot of people have been asking me lately on the Facebook Live Challenge that I've been doing. So I wanted to do a video with some of my favorite books. I have lots of books. I know, like most people, um, you probably have bookcase after bookcase of books. I love, love, love books. I know there's a lot of books online and you can read uh, PDFs and eBooks and such, but I am a physical book kind of person and that's what I love best. So I'm gonna get started first with the book that helps me to identify plants and that is the Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. This is by Lawrence Newcomb, N-E-W-C-O-M-B. And this is an older book that I have here. So I know the cover is a little different. I think right now it's a gray or light blue, something like that. But this is a fabulous book to identify plants because it has a key in the beginning. I'm just going to show briefly. See, it has this little key and it asks you some questions about the flower, how many parts the flower has, what type of plant is it? Is it a wildflower, a vine, or a shrub? And what the leaf is like? And then there's corresponding numbers and you take those numbers, say for example, one, two, three. You'll go a couple of pages further in the book and you go to one, two, three, and it tells you what pages you would find those plants on. And then you go to page 28 or 30, and it'll show you, I'm just gonna be brief on this one. Let's see, do, 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 do. And then it'll show you some different plants, and this happens to be violets. So it'll have your type of violet that's there. So I love this book. This is invaluable to me, so I like that. Um, my next book, if you're going to want to get into herbalism and go deeper into the actions and, and all different dosages and such for different herbal remedies, this book was one of the books that I had in the course that I took with Botano Logo School of Herbal Studies a few years ago, quite a few years ago. So it's by Winston and Kuhn, K-U-H-N, and it's called Herbal Therapy and Supplements. And this book is fabulous. It has so many plants in here. Not all the plants that we have in Georgia. It has a lot of common herbs as well and supplements. And it'll have different dosages, different um, contraindications, how to make the medicine, whether it's best to take it in a tincture or best to take it in a pill. Um, and all such like that. So this is a great book. This one's a little bit pricey though. I will warn you, I think it's around $40. So it's by Marilee Kuhn and David Winston. And all these books that I'm showing you, I'm gonna go ahead at the bottom of this video and I'm gonna put some links there for you. So you could just click the ones you want and you can go to Amazon. I think they're all on Amazon. I'm not quite sure, but I think they are. Uh, let's see, my next book that I would say, this was my very, very first herbal book. Can you see that? Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. This is a perfect book for beginners. It's only about 10 or $12. And you can also get it at the library. So if you have a local library system, check there first to make sure that you like it. What I like about this book, especially when I was a beginner, is it has colors of all the plants. It has descriptions and it has recipes. Most of the recipes in here I have done. Um, they're dog-eared, a lot of them, and I write notes in my book and such. So this book is very easy to follow. This is the back, talks about, it has 124 recipes in it. I probably have done almost all of those recipes, but this is by Rosemary Gladstar. She's like the, the queen of herbalism. She's been around for many years and has taught hundreds and thousands of, of herbal people. So I like that book. Uh, let's see, this one I just recommended to a friend of mine who's writing a book about uh, herbs and adaptogens and for athletes, 
um, I forget the name of it, the total of it. She's not done yet. But anyway, she has a chapter on adaptogens. So I recommended this book is also by David Winston, which is the one that wrote the Herbal Therapy and Supplements book. So this one's about adaptogens. And adaptogens, for those of you that don't know, is a group of different herbs that help your body deal with stress and not just stress as we know it stress in the body so if you have high blood pressure if you have low blood sugar those are all stressors within the body and adaptogens have different herbs and mushrooms that will help your body deal with the stress a little bit better so adaptogens herbs for strength and stamina and stress relief got that one this is a fairly new book by my friend Abby Artemisia, and it's called The Herbal Handbook for Homesteaders. So this is a great book, and this is also good for beginners as well. I would say this goes right along with Rosemary Gladstar's book, and she has lots of recipes for dogs, for people, for children, everything in here, how to make a tincture, how to make syrups. So good book, and she's from the South as well. So. Um, ba, 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 ba. I have um, this one. I like to make herbal drinks, lots of herbal drinks. <laughs> My friend Denise and I, other forager chick, we make all kinds of herbal cocktails. So this book by Emily Han, H-A-N, is called Wild Drinks and Cocktails. It's fabulous. I have made so many things in here. There's infusions and liqueurs. Uh, shrubs, syrups, and very easy to follow recipes, if you can see that. It's a beautifully colored book, so I do like that one too. It was hard for me to just go down to about 7 to 10, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10-ish books of my favorite because I have so many. I'll have to do another video on the mushroom ones. This book it's probably my best product making book. This one I used a lot to make. I, I experimented with soaps and shampoos and lotions, the lotion and my face cream that is in here. This is a great, great book. Some of the recipes are a little challenging because they use a lot of ingredients, but I've, I've stuck to the ones that I have the herbs and I have uh, the different base butters and oils and but it's really really good book uh, earthly bodies and heavenly hair by Dina Falcone she also wrote an herb book um darn it's not coming to it. foraging and feasting I think it is so she's fabulous and she's this hippie chick <laughs> and she talks about it in there a lot but everything is in here from making deodorant to making foot powders making lotions shampoos face creams eye cream so yeah i've written in this book a lot too i always write in my books because i like to change recipes um here's one of my favorite cookbooks the forager's kitchen i think this one is on amazon by fiona bird She's written a few books, but this book, she's from Scotland, I believe, or um, somewhere over near England. I thought it was Scotland. So a lot of the plants that she has, we have here too, which is kind of cool. But she'll talk about a different herb, like this one, she'll talk about stinging nettle. And then there's a recipe for salmon and nettle fish cakes. I love this book. I think one of my favorites. Let's see if I could get to it. Do, 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 do. Oh, here's something I would like to have. Wild hazelnuts to make the hazelnut, you know, kind of like Nutella, but to make your own holy mackerel. That would be delicious. And I know I've made this common sorrel sauce. So very beautiful recipe book. I love it. So that's a good way to use all of your uh, wild foods. But of course, I'm kind of partial to one book. <laughs> mine and Denise's book Wild Eating with the Forager Chicks so this one is now on Amazon as well we're very 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 excited I know I said very 42,000 times um, this has you using what's local whether it be local from your garden local from the woods local from the fields local from different farms and to use what you got like for example this salad so we we're picking all our greens and we're making a wild salad we have in here 
bread recipes, pie crust recipes, um, Nacho Mama's squash casserole using some mushrooms in there. We have, aren't those beautiful, wild and weedy wraps. So, yes, we like it. Wild eating with the forager chicks. And just got two more. And you can tell a lot of them are cookbooks. But, you know, when you're finding all these wild goodness out there, all the wild weeds and all the wild mushrooms, you want to be able to use them every day in your foods and in your medicine. So finding cook, a good cookbook that helps you do that is great instead of trying to make it up on your own. Some people are fine with working off the cuff and being like, okay, I just picked two pounds of wild greens, now what? So you want to adapt them into different recipes that you already have, but by using a cookbook that somebody else has made, it does make it a little bit easier. So this was one of my first books too, Wild Wisdom of Weeds by Katrina Blair. So this book is more of a survival book. I can't remember how many plants she, oh, sorry, 13 Essential Plants for Human Survival. So these 13 plants in this book grow pretty much all over the world. And that's really exciting, all over the world, 13 common plants. And she has a lot of recipes in there. The only thing about it that I don't like is she's a raw foods person. So her recipes are raw recipes or recipes that may be dehydrated, but nothing is really truly cooked. And while that's all fine and dandy, you know, whatever floats your boat. I do like to cook my crackers and such. I don't want to just grow, uh, dry them in the sun. But she has fabulous tutorials on cooking and stories about the different plants, where they grow, how they grow, best soil, uh, fermenting and such. So I like that book. And I keep saying my favorite, but it's probably one of my favorites. The New Wild Crafting Cuisine by Pascal Bowder. I have three, I think all three of his books. There's this one, there's one on fermenting, and there's also one on beverages. I'm trying to remember the name of the beverage one. I can't see it from here. Um, wild Beverages, something like that. But this book is, oh my gosh. So he's a real chef. And I say real, you know, like I'm not a chef or something, but, you know, I wasn't professionally trained in Europe with the big wigs. I just learned on my own and from TV. So um, he has some fancy dishes in here and things that you would never even think about. So the salted wild herbs, which I'm going to demonstrate later on another video. But this is an amazing way to preserve your herbs that you find right now in the springtime. And you preserve them in salt. How cool is that? And once you do that, if you could see that picture right there, you just keep this in the refrigerator or freezer and take spoonfuls and put them in your soups, your sauces, your pasta, anything like that. And there you go. You get your seasoning all at once. Little taste of spring all year long. It has different beverages in here, different vinegars. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is roasted mashed potatoes mixed with chickweed, clover, and sugar. Look at that. Awesome. I have made his mushroom beer with a little change, couple of changes too. There's plenty of fermented. I have made this pickled oyster mushrooms with wild seeds. And my recipe is in our Wild Eating with the Forager Chicks cookbook because I didn't have the same stuff that he had. He's from California, so they have a lot of different seeds and things out there. So there's that book, New Wildcrafted Cuisine. So I wanted you guys to see all those different books because <laughs> everybody keeps asking me. And you could start with one, two, three, all 10, 11, however many you want. I am gonna put some of the links below. I'm gonna try to put the name and the link so that this way all you have to do is just click it and get it if you wish try it at your library first try with friends um some of the used bookstores have lots of resources uh, where you can i mean gosh i'm trying to think which one of these i got at a bookstore local bookstore this one i think i got for two dollars at a bookstore its regular price is 19 dollars, and this one i got like for $5 used, and it's regularly 